Let's translate John 14, verse 6. Legi avto o Jesus, ego emi i odos, ke i alithia, ke i zoe, udis erchete proston patera imi de emu. He said to him, Jesus, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the subject. Jesus said to him, O is in brackets because it's somewhat contested as to whether it belongs in the original text. We'll talk more about that later. What does Jesus say? I am. Here's our ego in me. This comes from Exodus chapter 3, as we've seen many times before from the Gospel of John. And then, because of ego e me, we have predicate nominatives here. So, what I will do is show them to you in parallel. I am the way and the truth and the life. Okay, so these are all parallel and they all point back to I. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. No one comes to the Father except through me. So, udis imi is a grammatical construction. So, no one except. No one except imi. This would literally be if not, but we're not translating that uh, because of this specific construction. So, no one except. So, no one comes or is coming to the Father except through me. So, no one comes to the Father. And in this case, we have an accusative prepositional phrase, proston patera. This marks uh, who one approaches. Then we have our exception clause, imi, and then we have di emu. This is a genitive prepositional phrase. So by genitive, this marks either agency or instrument. And whether we're using instrument, circumstance, or personal agency, no matter what, we're translating it either as by or through. No one can come to the Father except by me or except through me. And so Jesus, Jesus is, is saying he is the exclusive agent of the Father. You can't go to the Father except through him. All right, so we have legi of to o Jesus. O is in brackets. It's interesting that most of the manuscripts include O, which makes sense because everywhere else we've seen these I am statements, typically... O, Jesus, is what is used. Except for some reason, a few manuscripts, early manuscripts at that, good manuscripts at that, Alexandrian texts from 3rd, 4th, 5th century, they exclude O. Why would that be? In truth, it ultimately does not matter. With or without O, it makes no difference. So the concern is not substantive, but rather, are we taking the text seriously? Are we working with the original text? And that's not to discredit the, the text. That's not to discredit the Bible. That's not to discredit scripture. Instead, it's to take scripture seriously. I would say it's very plausible though we don't know for sure, and that is why it is in brackets. That is the common accepted practice today. When something is not certain, put it in brackets. And it, I think it's plausible that o, o should have been there to begin with because that is the common Johannine usage. 
it's possible that the earliest manuscript writers, copyists, uh, were copying from a text that simply did not have it. And why did that happen? Well, it could very well be that the original hand or a later copyist, we don't know, uh, accidentally overlooked O and went straight to Jesus. And then subsequent uh, copyists copied the shorter version. It's very possible. But we have 5th century, 4th century Alexandrian texts. We have Western texts, 5th century. Uh, we have 4th, 5th century mixed texts. Uh, and then we have later ones, 9th, 10th century, 12th, 15th century. And of course, the majority text all include O. And so I'm not saying that it's by totality of manuscripts, but I think logically it makes sense per co per the typical Johannine usage. It should have been O Jesus, right? As the Gospel of John, uh, very likely that the author included it. And then a later copyist accidentally overlooked it. And then additional copyists later copied the shorter version. Uh, that makes total sense. The purpose of textual criticism is not to look at the, the absolute earliest. It's not to look at uh, the text that bears the most witnesses, but rather which reading can explain them all. The one that can explain them all is most likely the original reading. So that's my take on it. Ultimately, it doesn't matter with or without the article here. It's still Jesus talking. That is not in dispute. Then we have Ego Emi. That's from Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. You can see here's the Septuagint. And God's speaking to Moses and says, Ego imi o on, I am who I am. So we have here another ego imi statement. Now with this ego imi statement, he's saying, I am the way. This could be road, highway. It could be trip, journey. It can also be a figurative extension, a metaphor of highway or journey. And so translate way or way of life. And what, what that means is it's a course of behavior. Jesus is saying, I am the way. I'm the way of life. I am the way you ought to behave. And in, in John, that's often characterized as love. But here, Christ is saying, I am the way to God. And so it's really a journey in uh, a transcendent journey. And I'm the truth. This can be what is true, truthful, dependable, upright. It can be the content of what is true or truth, ultimate truth. It can be reality. So in this case, I would argue it's going to be along the lines of ultimate truth, especially of the content of Christianity as the ultimate truth. Truth expresses itself in virtues like righteousness and holiness. So now we're talking about behavior, which brings us back to way of life. Hence, it is contrasted with adikia, adikia unclean. You can see here, aletheia is a favorite word of the Johannine literature and plays a major role in it. God's word is truth. Truth comes in with charis, grace, and with the spirit, and in word uh, and love. The spirit leads into truth, hence uh, the spirit of truth. The spirit is identified with truth. It's mediated through Christ, John 1, 17, who calls himself truth, 14, 6. So truth here is the ultimate truth, the truth expressed in righteousness and holiness. So it has a behavioral component to it, and it's mediated through Christ. 
And then life, Zoe. We've seen this before, transcendent life as opposed to physical life. This is life in God or life in Christ. And then we see Udis Ercate Pros Ton Patera Imi Diemu. So Udis is functioning substantively, no one, and it's in com combination with Imi, no one except. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, Erica May uh, can mean come, go, and it comes in combination with various prepositional phrases. In this case, we've got proston patera. And here we see our example, proston patera, 14.6. But if you look up here, used with prepositions, this is in uh, regarding come and uh, movement. So prepositions in this case, we've got apo, ek, is, dia, en, epi, meta, kata, para, there it is, all the way at the end, with accusative of person, to, so it's who you're approaching. Then we have Diamu. So dia in the genitive, marker of extension through an area or object. That's not the case. Marker of extension in time. That's not what we're talking about. Instrumentality or circumstance whereby something is accomplished or affected of means or instrument. Translated by, via, through, this is possible. Marker of personal agency, through or by, with focus on agency, through the agency of. So I would argue it's probably agency here. Jesus as agent. And that leaves us with our translation. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button and let me know. Brush up on your Greek and Hebrew, and we will see you next time.